Hey y'all, Data Guy here. So my quick little short video on how you can just, you know, submit runs to Azure Data Factory from Airflow got a lot of love. So I figured why not circle back on it and show you how you can really manage Azure Data Factory at scale using Airflow. Um, so a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'm either going to use Azure Data Factory or Airflow. Um, and a lot of times, you know, people come to Airflow from Azure Data Factory once Azure Data Factory, you know, you're getting out of that, it's kind of specific purview. Um, and so Airflow, using it as a management layer, allows you to, you know, better orchestrate. You get all the great orchestration and optionality of Airflow by, you know, setting logic as code around your Azure Data Factory pipeline jobs. Maybe you bring some of them over to Airflow. Maybe you keep running some of them in Azure Data Factory, but you want to manage them in the context of your larger data pipeline. And so that is where this video is coming into play. Um, so if you like this content, if you're a regular listener, please like, subscribe. Um, it really helps me out uh, as I try to bring the good word of Airflow to more people. Um, and so enough profitizing. Um, so here under my packages imports, just always love to go over these so you know which, what I'm using here. Um, we're going to import the task decorator to define our tasks and using the task API, uh, the DAG model chain to chain our tasks together at the end, uh, our dummy operator, short circuit operator, um, just so we can have some fail safes. Then we also have uh, our Azure Data Factory hook to just hook in Azure Data Factory to perform jobs without a specific purview. Um, we also have our Azure Data Factory run pipeline operator, just specifically dedicated to running pipelines, um, and a pipeline run status sensor that will actually sense the status of those pipelines um, to you know make sure that they're running okay. Because you know an Azure Data Factory pipeline is probably going to take some time before it actually completes, and so you want you know an Airflow task to actually make sure that that task has completed before maybe you run a downstream task that's going to use the data that's coming out of that Azure Data Factory pipeline. Um, and I'll call it ADF from now on. So after that, just importing uh, some utils days ago and task groups just to reference um, task groups and also just reference a couple days ago more easily. Um, and so then once I'm done with that, what I'll do is create a task that is get latest pipeline, pipeline run status. Um, so here I'm going to create a task. So this is, and I'll have a link to all this code because it's not like some standard code with Azure Data Factory, it gets a little bit funky. Um, so what I'll show you within here is just, you know, how you can actually interact with it to get that information that you're going to need. Um, so here you'll have your connection ID, pipeline name, factory name, resource group name, all brought in as strings. Uh, and we'll actually pass this in within the DAG code. So this is just creating that uh, task function. Um, and then what we'll do is get the status of a latest pipeline run given some of those variables. Um, so here you can see the definition of those variables. Um, and then we're also going to import our different Azure uh, data factory models so that we can you know, run filters, run different queries, um, and just have these available as kind of a method within Python um, to manage these uh, Azure data factory operations. Um, so then what we can do is run a query filter um, that is going to, sorry, I'm scrolling here, um, check for a pipeline with a provided name. Um, no, it's not that. Um, so, sorry about this, a little sloppy today. Um, so here we have this run query filter where we're using um, that run filter operand to check for uh, our pipeline. Um, we also want to make sure, so we have our operator here to check our filter operation is any pipelines equal to our pipeline name and passing it the value of that pi pipeline name. So I told you it's a little clunky, it's a little weird, but I'm, you know, this is how you do it. Um, so the next thing we'll do is actually create a pipeline uh, run query order by to order our pipeline runs um, so we can get a list of them. So here we can look at all the different pipeline runs for that particular pipeline name. Um, and then we have our filter parameters, which are just going to be parameters that are going to narrow that down to just pipeline runs within the past seven days. So you can see here we have our run filter parameters again on this um, run order that we just ran with run query older, uh, order by. So we're nesting an object within this run parameters um, object here. And then <laughs> what we're doing is we're going to retrieve any runs for that given pipeline um, within a given factory. Um, so here you can look at checking for, you know, latest status. This will print out a log um, of 
what pipeline you're checking for so it's easier to debug within Airflow without having to go back into the ADF UI. Um, and so here we're creating using that Azure Data Factory hook, referencing a connection ID, and I'll show you how to do that in a second in the Airflow UI. Um, and then hook, get connection, um, it's getting my connection, then it's getting the pipeline runs, then it's querying by factory. Um, and then we are passing it all these objects that we just created. So our filter params, um, our resource group name. So that was created um, or was passed in uh, as part of the task definition. We have our factory name. So these are just, and then our filter params, which is just set right here. Um, and so now we are getting for all the latest runs of this pipeline within a given factory um, within the past seven days. Um, and then once we are done with that, we have a really long um, if statement that'll say, "Hey, were these pipeline static or were these pipeline runs found?" Um, so, if query response value um, has a value, um, then pipeline status is whatever the status of this query was. So, this is just going to give us the query response from this hook, which is giving us again the list of those pipeline runs within the past seven days. Then it's using Jinja templating to um, check, hey, whatever the latest status of this, so this is value zero, the latest pipeline run um, had the status of this, and we're building that message dynamically, um, again, using logging to pass it within the Airflow logs um, of that pipeline status. Then, um, if that pipeline exists, but it was never run um, before or within that pipeline time window, then we're gonna say that pipeline does exist, but it didn't have any runs specified within the, that window. Um, so we're going to run another operation that's going to check if that pipeline exists. Um, and if it does exist, send a message saying it does. If it doesn't exist, then send a message saying it doesn't. And just return the different error messages of no run in time window or does not exist. Um, so that, you know, what the actual cause of it is. Um, so that is a very big pipeline. So you'll notice that we're not actually using the operators directly you're in this one, we're creating a task that is then using some of those operators. Um, and so this is when you want to get more complex and kind of structure your queries. So you don't have to do all of your ADF operations like this, but when you're trying to query that information out, the this is the way you kind of need to do it because the other Python or ADF operators don't give you this granularity of information. Um, they'll just tell you what the output is and trigger pipelines. Um, so if you want to do things outside of that, you'll need to build it yourself, which is why I wanted to make this video to kind of show you some of the more complex use cases here. Um, and so then once we're done with that, we will just create a task group to show you some of the other uh, Azure Data Factory operations and also pass information into that task that we just created. Um, so here we are creating a task group, um, extract, Azure Data Factory Pipeline um, as extract Azure Data or extract Data Factory Pipeline, um, and then here we're getting that get latest pipeline run status. So that's the name of our task up here, um, and then passing it our connection ID, pipeline name, factory name, resource group name. Um, then we have a short circuit operator that is going to check the pipeline run status of the previous task. Um, so you can see here we have if it is you know whatever this um, whatever the Python callable returns um, to then decide, hey, are we going to continue in this pipeline or not based on um, that success window? Um, so that is kind of what's happening in that task. Um, and then after that, we're running an extract pipeline. Um, and this is how you'll actually trigger a pipeline. So here we're just getting status. The Azure Data Factory run pipeline operator will allow you to trigger it. And then what you probably want to do is then set up a get latest status to actually monitor it after it's running. Um, and then what you'll do is have a wait for extract pipeline run. And this is a sensor that'll trigger, hey, or that'll keep paying the output of this previous pipeline um, to check if it has successfully completed. Um, and you can see then it'll be assigned a run ID. Um, and so because we're just referencing the run extract pipeline dot output in this, it'll automatically create um, that relationship. Um, and then the only thing we'll need to define here is just, you know, linking is extract pipeline running and run extract pipeline. Um, so saying, hey, if it isn't running, then let's run it. If it is, if it's already running, don't bother. Um, and so that is our first task group. So this is just really for extraction activity. So this is, you know, hey, I want to run this pipeline. I want to make sure it's extracted. Uh, if it's already extracted that data, don't run it. Um, so our next pipeline is going to be 
um, more of a data quality and load kind of situation. Um, so with this, what we're going to do is say, hey, again, a different task group using that get latest pipe run run status. That's why we created it as a task. So we can reuse it and just pass that connection ID, same variables as before, get the information about the pipeline run status. Again, checking whether or not this uh, status or this pipeline is running successfully. Um, and then after that, we're going to run that data quality pipeline if it's not running. Um, and if it is running, then don't bother uh, without waiting for termination. So what this means is that the task will mark as completed before the actual pipeline has completed running. It'll just mark as completed after um, that pipeline has been triggered. And then we have our Azure Data Factory pipeline run status sensor to really ping it, make sure this doesn't run or anything downstream of this doesn't run until that Azure Data Factory pipeline has completed. Um, so two pretty similar task groups here, just slightly different use cases of, hey, you know, do I want to um, keep it running or do I not? It's very, very similar here. Um, so just kind of want to show you, you know, some slightly different um, setup. And then to put it all together, all you're going to do is just create or use a chain function to link everything together and you're off to the races. Um, so now we'll kick it over the Airflow UI and I'll show you how to set up that connection ID so this all works properly. And so now we can see our Azure Data Factory pipeline within here. So just booting it up real quick. So you can see pretty much two identical task groups that are performing the same operation. Um, in this case, you know, hey, we've already extracted the data and then we want to run some data quality checks on it. Um, so just having that fail safe of, hey, this is only going to run if it's not already running. So you don't end up with duplicates, um, always extracting, and then similar thing with data quality. Um, and so the way, the only thing you need to do with the Airflow UI is just go to your Azure Data Factory connection. So we'll create a new Azure Data Factory. Um, so give it a second. Then we will Azure Data Factory. Um, and then because we called it um, our Azure data, just Azure data factory um, in our DAG. So make sure your connection ID is the same. And then what you'll need here is to have your client ID um, and then your Azure client secret. Um, and then within the extras field, you're actually going to need to also define your tenant ID and subscription ID. Um, and actually it looks like this might, or that might be out of date where now they have incorporated the tenant ID. So tenant ID and sub ID. Um, so I think they actually fixed it. So you don't no longer have to uh, pass it in via an extras in the Jinja template because Azure Data Factory is just now supported connector type, um, which is really nice. I thought I was gonna have to do that again. Um, so then you can't test anything anymore in the Airflow 2.7 unless you specifically enable it. So then you just save it um, and you are off the races to start or managing your Azure Data Factory pipelines. Um, so I really hope you learned something. I think this is, you know, great way to kind of bridge the gap between Airflow and Azure Data Factory um, and help integrate everything into one UI and use Airflow to monitor everything rather than constantly switching, you know, between Airflow and Azure Data Factory. Um, so that's all for today. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in an upcoming video and Data Guy out. Peace.